It feels like a while since the last time I've done one of these. Oh, I feel for my brother. Hello everybody, welcome to Durang's in-depth trailer analysis, where we look through every nook and cranny throughout this whole trailer. That's right, we're going to be milking this thing for everything that it has, so buckle up, because it might just be a while. So the first thing that we're going to be starting off with is obviously the Peggy 16. According to this website that I found, this rating is applied once the depiction of violence or sexual activity reaches a stage that looks the same as would be in real life. The use of bad language in games with a Peggy 16 rating can also be more extreme, while the use of tobacco alcohol or illegal drugs can also be present but is this the right rating for human trafficking and killing kids hmm I guess we'll talk about that more towards the end of the video you let me know down in the comments if you think that's the right rating we're gonna move on here so the next scene shows two SWAT officers facing towards the camera although they aren't specifically looking at it it seems as if they're waiting for something something to give them the go-ahead and then a voice proceeds to speak Battery team, you're clear to proceed. And then as you can see, their heads kind of like jump up in readiness. Now, these guys aren't wearing anything that we haven't seen before. Let's see, we've got an ops core helmet, ESS goggles, an ear pro of some kind, contour cameras, you know, the works. I obviously wouldn't know any of this stuff without my subscribers, so thank you guys for telling me what the hell all this stuff is. But unfortunately, as the game stands now, it doesn't actually name off the pieces of gear that's actually featured in the game, or at least in the current version that I have. So we're just going to call the things by the names that are featured in the game. So let's go ahead and get started. Here. The guy in the front is wearing what's called anti-flash goggles. The lenses of these tactical goggles are lacquered with BESP coating designed to mitigate the bright lights and scratches. He also has an Opti one on his back, although it's not called an Opti one As it stands now, the name for it in the game is called a mirror gun. It allows you to look under doors and around corners. It's a big reference to SWAT 4, but it's not called the Opti one in Ready or Not. It has another name, but we'll talk about that later. The armor that he's wearing is light armor. It's a basic Kevlar vest and plate carrier that allows for peak performance and comfort. Pretty neat. The guy in the back does not appear to have anything on the back of his back there, or at least as far as I can see, but he appears to be wearing an up armoring helmet, which provides extra protection for the front of the head, as well as plates on the sides to assist in deflecting projectiles. So that's about as much as we can tell when it comes to gear here. Trying to figure out where they're at, it seems as if they're in the hotel map here. The name of the hotel is called the Weberly Hotel, which has been shown in several videos and newsletters before this and uh, yeah that's all i can really get from this scene let's go ahead and push into the next thing here this is where we get our first glimpse at the alpha gameplay footage and yeah it looks pretty much the same as what we have as far as i can tell we see three SWAT officers stacking up on a door they're not really stacking up they're kind of just looking at it the first guy here is holding a scar l the scar l is a variant of the scar designed for close quarters battle scenarios the weapon features a quad rail system with optional optics and an adjustable stock the guy in front of him has a shield so I'm assuming he's gonna go in first because the shield could just about block almost everything. But I believe it will deteriorate over time. The guy to the left of the shield guy, he's holding a 5.7, which is a very reliable semi-automatic pistol with low recoil and high penetration capability. And I believe in his holster right there, he also has an MP5, which was a lightweight submachine gun once widely used by the SWAT in North America. Chambered with 9mm bullets, it's a powerful weapon, but watch your targets. And they're standing right next to a soda machine, which kind of throws me off because it reminds me of the sort of machines that are featured in gas station which is another map that we've talked about previously but i'm pretty sure that this entire video just revolves around hotel as far as i can tell there is some text on the soda machine which says if i'm not mistaken motherfuckers are dropping the pressure i don't think that's significant but it's interesting that a soda machine says that so yeah either the guy with the 5.7 or the shield opens up the door the shield guy walks in the guy with the 5.7 follows behind him and the scar guy is about to come right behind him before it cuts to the next scene it looks like they're going into some kind of lobby area maybe again we do have a version of hotel in the alpha but it's not the same as the one that they're currently showing off like this one is way more polished and way more finished but of course as i say that we go into the next scene where things seem to be a little unpolished i think i saw a lot of people pointing this out on the discord where they were saying how the floor kind of looks like it isn't textured and some of the hallway here too but i think one thing that people haven't pointed out is just how the second dude in the middle just stops at the top of the stairs right there look at his legs oh it's a really bad 
bad time to be sitting on an invisible chair while you're at the top of the stairs, am I right? If anything, this scene really shows how unpolished the game could be, that they might be far along, but they're just not quite there. But anyways, so these guys are just walking down a hall. The guy in front, he kind of like races off, slides to the right, and then looks left and right down the hallways that are at the end there. The guy in the middle stops at the top of the stairs, while our character is following up right beside the guy on the stairs. If there's anything that I want to say before we move on, uh, the guy that's on the stairs here, he has a breaching shotgun on the back of his back here that's used for opening up doors. No idea if you could actually use this as a weapon, but I assume you can at some point in development and uh, yeah another thing is that he also has a medical kit on the back of his belt there the medical kit can obviously fix you up not fully heal you but fix you up in case you got like a broken leg or broken arm or something and uh, yeah let's go ahead and push on to the next scene here because it kind of cuts to the next scene as soon as the dude gets to the end of the hallway it shows a close-up of these zip cuffs I thought they were actually called zip ties but obviously the proper name is zip cuffs but anyways you see a bunch of text pop off to the right side here it says most important tool for making arrests white plastic strap nylon material price 10 cents in american extremely lightweight introduced in 1965 really i didn't know that i thought they were a much newer thing and we used to use a lot of freaking handcuffs for a while until recently guess i'm mistaken but in the next scene here we actually get a demonstration as to how you're going to be using these cuffs Hands up now! was it really necessary to kick him while he's already on the ground with his hands up probably not but what do i know police brutality one thing that I noticed is that the guy that says hands up now sounds different to me. Like he sounds like a brand new voice actor that I haven't heard before. Now maybe it's because he has a bit of a radio effect on him. I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely sounds like a brand new voice actor. The scene itself is of two officers and a civilian, which I believe is a bellboy. Can't really tell if that's a guy or a girl, but this person is on their knees and their hands up and the officer proceeds to arrest him. Now this animation goes relatively fast, but I believe I do have footage of what it's actually supposed to look like when the person is actually standing up. The animation looks relatively the same except I'm assuming that the one that I'm showing is if he's not compliant this is a new animation because it's not the same as the one that we have in the current game in the current game there's not even a backward animation where you can actually do that I think the one that's in the current game is actually not too bad though this is that we don't really have one from the back it just kind of like snaps to the front and does the animation the one that we have currently and again this does take place in the hotel I believe so yeah let's go ahead and push on to the next scene here the next scene cuts to the other officers perspective so we could get a better look at the cuffing animation obviously we're still in the same hotel Hotel area. He's holding an HK416 with some sort of hollow EOTech, I assume, and a laser pointer on the front. And that's that. Cuts to the next scene, and we see a close up of one of his belts. Text pops up to the side of it saying, The M84 stun grenade, or flash grenade, or flashbang, however you want to call it. This little grenade really does have a lot of names, doesn't it? This bad boy can reach up to 170 decibels within five feet of initiation. With a length of five and a quarter inches, diameter of 1.73 inches, it being made with pyrotechnic metal, oxidant, with a mix of magnesium and ammonium and has been in service since 1995 honestly not my weapon of choice i'm the type of dude that likes to use the nine bang because i feel like it's more effective but the flashbang can be helpful in certain situations continuing on we see like a brief little clip of one of the guys tossing in a flashbang into the bar area if i remember correctly the bar area is like the green room at least from everything that i've seen but anyways so he lobs in the bang but then it cuts to the next scene and you see the explosion but i don't think that's the flashbang that explodes i believe that is the c2 charge that was put on a door which I believe that door is the kitchen area. But then it cuts to the next scene where it shows these guys are stacking up on a door here. He's pulling out his mag to check how much he's left in and it looks like it's pretty much full. Then it cuts to another scene where you see him leaning out into like some sort of foyer, I want to call it, or a lobby maybe. You can see a civilian that's on the ground right there. He aims in and then it cuts to the next scene. What's this? We got the Optiwan as I call it, but in Ready or Not it's called the Cyrus Mirror Gun, which is a digital handheld inspection tool with an expandable neck that gathers intel under doors and a around corners. It has a zoom functionality, which I believe is a new feature that wasn't present on Swap 4's Opti 1, if I remember correctly. It's been a while, so let me know if I'm wrong or right. Pushing on to the next scene here, it actually shows off how this thing works. So this is the front door of the Weberly Hotel. It looks underneath and you actually hear this dude screaming. So this is the front area of the lobby, I believe. Then it cuts to like a scene that's like very dark. I have to like turn up the freaking brightness on this. But you could see a dead cartel body right there in front of a statue. That statue looks ridiculously bloody or is very red looking. You can just barely see the heads of the two SWAT officers. Like they're kind of blurred out on the left and the right here. Push it onto the next scene and you see a vehicle, a burning vehicle that's inside of the hotel, I'm assuming. Or if not, this is outside. I can't tell. But I see two dead or maybe unconscious cartel members. Well, the one 
one in front looks like a cartel member. I can't tell what the one on the right looks like. Let me get a bit of a zoomed out shot of the vehicle. It looks like it went through like some sort of window. Can't really tell from this angle. It's still pretty dark. Curious to know how that actually got in there. Maybe it was a vehicle that was on display and they just started burning it up. Who knows? And then it cuts to a scene where you can barely see officers crossing the screen here. You can actually hear their footsteps. They're crossing in front of some sort of statue that looks kind of odd. Looks like the neck is stretched out just a bit too long for me, in my opinion. And also, I think the SWAT officer running animation looks just a little awkward, especially that last guy right there. Like, his neck just looks a little too tall for me. I think he's actually free-looking as he's walking by, I think. Yeah, he's, like, free-looking. He's looking at the camera, and then he, like, shakes his head. And it snaps back to his regular form. And then it cuts to the next scene here. We've got the HK416 rifle, the new one. It's origin from Germany. Cartridge, 556 by 45 NATO rounds. Really? It can fire 850 rounds per minute. It has a Picatinny rail for customization and has been in service since 2004. Can't wait to get my hands on it. Looks like it has uh, some sort of 4X, I think, at the top there. And a laser sight on the side with, I think, a red dot on it, too. Very nice. Can't wait to use it. The next scene, you see him actually walking with it. You can hear him breathing, aiming out to the side there. And then it cuts to a scene where you see a fez on the ground, I think that is. I think that's what it's called. And a bunch of blood stains that might indicate where the suspect or hostiles are. And then you see the door ram, the iconic door ram that we've seen from every trailer. You know, it's funny because they actually dropped a picture in one of the news updates and I was like, well, you know, what if they actually use this for a trailer and here they are using it for a trailer. So they stack up on the door and one of them talks to talk and the SWAT officer on the right actually gives him a thumbs up. Does that mean that there's going to be hand signals? Or was that just kind of like scripted? I don't know. It seems like it was in game to me. Might have been scripted. Then it cuts to a scene where you see the cartel member running out, kind of like scared. He's like, oh my God, here they come. And then you see a close up of the battering ram. It says knock knock on the side. It'd be really cool if you could actually customize that. I wouldn't even know what I'd put on my battering ram. But anyways, so then it cuts to the cartel guy again. And you just see him like run off. Then it cuts back to the door. I'm assuming from the other side of the officers. Kind of zooms in and then cuts to the battering ram again and then bam team 17 so this is pretty much the end of my analysis video but as you can see the video is not over just yet this is where i kind of want to talk a bit about team 17 because i do have uh, some concerns that i'd like to talk about but ultimately i think that one interactive going with team 17 is actually a all in all good thing because when team 17 partnered with hell let loose hell let loose's updates started coming out like fast faster than they ever did before but when i dropped the video with this title could the partnership between void interactive and team 17 ruin ready or not on the previous video it was supposed to be like a joke because one of the developers said something like um they were guessing what the next title of my video was gonna be and they just wrote that i'm like okay why not it was basically a joke a clickbaity title but i ended up getting a bunch of comments that actually did have legitimate concerns and i'm just like uh, i mean i guess they do got a point like this comment right here team 17 coincided with a complete change of direction of hell let loose who dropped their game mode which i remember that like i remember the game mode that they were promising was like way more intuitive but now all the game modes that they had are basically just squad game modes go here capture that hold this area like i remember them having like a much more complicated system but they basically scrapped it dropped their map size i remember making a video on that the maps were a hell of a lot bigger but now they just basically cut them in half and i remember them explaining it but it didn't make any sense to me i guess it was for optimization but i don't know hell let loose's optimization today still kind of stinks i initially lied about it and moved further and further into casual gameplay which yeah anytime when somebody asks me if i like postscriptum or hell let loose better i always tell them that i like them both but i would say that hell let loose is more arcadey than postscriptum is adding individual progression and weapon unlocks that the devs themselves ruled down the kickstarter i don't remember that but, but if somebody wants to check that out for me let me know now with the announcement that the game is going to consoles it all makes sense the kickstarter backers for hell let loose the very people that enabled development have a game that bears no resemblance whatsoever to the game that they backed and that is true because i remember the alpha being like completely different than what's out now like the way that you pulled out your map you'd actually have to like stop there and actually physically pull out a map and there was also the thing with the medic like do we want to give him a gun or not but getting back to the comment team 17 they will make sure that the game is dumbed down to get maximum exposed to larger audience losing any features that made the game unique don't be surprised to see this on consoles and selling well but any advertising that has already gone out pre team 17 can be ripped up and ignored but your life they won't follow it and to be honest there have been a lot of moments where i've seen the game just kind of like do things and i'm like wait why are you doing this void like they were doing a lot of things that didn't make any sense to me it's like if it ain't broke don't fix it why are you doing this i mean a couple of those things happened a while ago i don't know how long team 17 has been working with void interactive but two things that i do want to say is that void did seem to get rid of the paper man that used to be at the bottom left of the screen which was like a big homage 
to swap four they switched that out and not too long ago they also made it so that when you're trying to look at your buddy's screen now it's at like the top left of your screen right there when you press uh, i think it's a page up or something initially what it used to be was that you had to actually switch to a tablet so that you could actually look at your buddy's screen but I feel like not a whole lot of people would actually do that because I just feel like it took like a whole lot of time and you put your gun away. It's a system that I initially thought was going to be cool, but after actually using it, I almost never used it in any situation. So I'm kind of glad that they went back to the swap four system. Only now did it just dawn on me that this is one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it situations, which again, has happened several times under wraps. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I do think that them going with team 17 was the best move for them, but I do worry that Team 17 could dumb down the game, which I really hope that that doesn't happen because it feels like we're in the stages of Hell Let Loose where Void Interactive wasn't as active, but as soon as Team 17 comes along, now they start dropping like a ridiculous amount of stuff and they've been dropping a bunch of cool stuff for the supporters too, like stuff that I'm not able to show to you, but they have definitely been dropping a lot of cool stuff for us. So yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? I mean, because they've been dropping a crap ton of updates, I thought that I would, you know, do an analysis video of the previous video that they dropped. I mean, Team 17 the team will definitely kick void interactive into gear so if void actually misses like you know the release date for the beta then there will probably actually be consequences for them so i mean i guess that's like a really good thing for us it's kind of funny because i was actually talking in the chat i was like team 17 void interactive is being inactive again and then i saw freaking team 17 hop into the chat and be like what the f <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna end the video here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like ready or not then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below there were someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding the bell i am ridiculously close to hitting 10k subscribers i know i know there's a lot of people that think that i uh, i'm already like at 200k or 100k and i'm just like no that's that's not true at all i'm i'm, I'm really small fry here please send help help me obi-wan kenobi you're my only and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye